Hello and welcome to Cheapskate. My name is Cameron and this is a guitar I built for the Great Guitar Build Off 2023. And this video, uh, there is a little video about that if you want to go and watch it, uh, of the, ent the entry video. But this one is about just the making of the fretboard. The fretboard is quite striking as you can see. Uh, the fretboard material is blackwood, same as the, most of the body and the neck. And the inlay material is maple. It's quite a deep inlay um, because I wanted it to use it as side dots as well. So here on the side, the, the fretboard is five millimeters thick, and three millimeters of that is the maple, and is a two millimeter bit under that, which is blackwood. I use the same material for the neck as the fretboard, so that if these maple bits didn't turn out the same thickness, it's harder to tell because you don't have a hard fretboard line to judge it from. I was really wrapped with this because it came out perfect. There is no uh, filling in this at all. There's no like sawdust and glue filling or anything. It just came out like that. And there's a couple of tricks to getting to come out like that, which I'll explain in the video. So you don't have to worry about going deep because maple is a good fretboard material anyway, as this multi-scale I built uh, a little while ago headless model scale that also has a maple fretboard maple, maple is a very good fretboard material um, this bit here I don't explain very well in the video I just did a solid piece of maple and then later on I went and cut it out with uh, a fine tooth saw and I had some two millimeter thick uh, blackwood which I used for the top of that acoustic guitar there and I um, yeah just sort of slipped it in, just sand, you know. Basically what I do with everything is I make the slot and have the material slightly thicker and then sand the material, try it, sand it, try it, sand it, try it until it just goes in. Because if, you, if you're having to kind of squeeze it in, you know, you've got a perfect fit. And that's how you're getting sort of perfect lines. Uh, anyway, so now let's have a look at some video of me actually um, putting this sucker together. So these two have got nice figuring they're basically what i call face timber this one looks more like a quarter saw in piece with the straight grain running through it these felt lighter to me and i can see why when i look at the end grain find this piece well you could probably see that you probably see here this one stripe there one there another one here so it's actually it looks like well, there might be one there it looks like almost like softwood rapid growth it is pretty light um, you can, it's pretty easy to see here you've got those ridges going through this piece it's easy to tell here or here but you can see a lot of lines this is a much more dense piece so I think because of that it'll make a much better fretboard it's heavier and harder also because I'm putting the maple stripe through it or I think I am anyway it's um, the figuring won't be noticeable because with something a contrast running through it it'll take your eye away from the figuring anyway so this could actually be the way to go I think it's only been a couple of hours actually no it's been about three hours the next thing I'm going to do is just trim these ends of the fretboard off fairly close on the bandsaw and then the next step after that will be to route the neck. So I'll put this template on. About there. Yeah. And I'll probably attach this using the uh, masking tape and super glue trick. Put it on the route table and route it. I'm not going to be able to do that today because it's raining uh, and I have to do my routing outdoors, so um, it'll have to be tomorrow is luck. Hello and welcome to my office. 
I'm a little bit worried about cutting this zero fret slot because it's only about four millimeters from the edge and I don't want that to break off because I still have to cut into this to put my string retainer in and all that which I haven't quite worked out how it's going to work yet. Anyway, I'm going to get this one done and actually put on my incredibly sexy rock and roll glasses <laughs> and we'll just put the mark on this one. Sorry the lighting is bad, this is incredibly scary, I'm going to attempt to make a 4mm hole. I'm going to start inside the 12th fret and it wonders it won't matter because that's going to be different there. Okay, so I'll start it inside the 12th fret, here goes, oh, I'm a safety freak, okay. 12th fret is here, so we start it inside of here, in theory we can't go wrong. Double check the depth before we go any further. It looks a bit too deep actually. No, it's exactly right. 3.9 it says, I wanted 4, so that's good enough. Now, this is scary. You can see there that bump, that's why I wanted to start in the 12th fret because this is going to be cut out. So I've got to make this go straight. The only thing is, Probably need to have it this way. Can we get all the way to where we want to go? No. This is in the way. I think we'll do as far as we can first and then we're going to have to change over. And if we go up this way, yes we can get all the way. Alright, I've got to try and hold this steady folks, wish me luck. Looks good. It's a bit dodgy, brothers, but uh, hopefully it works. stop point? No, I've got to get to here. I was just worried that I just couldn't see it or something. Beautiful. Okay, see that one with the bump? That bump there? That's the 12th fret. I'm going to take this out, trying to keep it at the same level. It's going to rock around a bit at the start because uh, it's not at the depth. So I'll start off holding it.
Okay. I felt as though I just didn't have enough control to do this a good job on it. The edge looks fine, so I will use chisels and stuff to neaten it up. But I might just continue with this so that I know I'm getting the depth the same as the middle. I'll write it on the side of the neck actually. So I know that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 21. Okay, so we'll knock those ones out. That's going to be this one, this one, this one. Will I hit this? No, but I will after this one. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have to. this clamp now because I've got to take the other ones off. sharper that's a much better chisel oh that's better much better so that's the neck though thus far fretboard this will be all maple all these gaps and um, yeah this should be the top of the neck you can see we'll be able to see third fifth seventh ninth twelfth frets Um, so happy with how this has gone. It's just uh, gone way better than I thought it would. Um, yeah, like very, very happy with it. Spread that out a little bit. And we'll push it in from this side. Uh, that's too much glue. Let's pull back a little bit. And then push it in from there. I probably, all I probably have to do is actually just push this in like I've just done and then leave it. It'll probably be fine, but I am going to put some clamps on as well. Let's get you in now. 
few into that end. This one sits up a bit higher. Yep, okay. I forgot about that. Yep, it does. Alright. Like I say, I really did think that that would. Uh, oh, we've got glue in here. Right well, through here, actually. But. Actually, through this joint. Well, this has become much more difficult than I thought it would be. That looks like it should just pop out. Now, there we go. That's what I want to have is it just to peel off like that. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be stuck on there. That might maybe right on the edges it might be, but I can see it's it's gonna lift off this side pretty soon so it looks like it wants to lift off. There we go. Okay, so the main thing is that we preserve that top edge. There we go. Phew! This is a lot sharper this chisel, so we'll just keep using this one, I think. dog's going to eat it, so I better grab it. <laughs> Might change the camera angle a little bit so you can see a bit better. Okay, it feels like it's going to break now anyway, so I might just be able to push this forward. Just make sure now, because I didn't saw it all the way through, so I'll just try and use it to cut through a little bit now without damaging the fretboard at all or touching the fretboard at all if possible. So I'm trying to follow the principle for chiseling, which is take off small amounts at a time. Don't don't try and do big things with chisels, just do little bits and never push hard <laughs> if you think you need to push hard then something's wrong either it's not sharp and uh, if you push hard then things slip and then you end up like you know slipping and go poof, right across your fretboard and putting a big gouge in it or something of that ilk so it's far better just to uh, Take it easy and do very small bits at a time. Well, that fits in for depth just fine. It's just that edge, there's a, just at this corner here, I don't know if you can see it. So, I don't know, you know I'll try and get as close as I can. So, you might see just in the corner here next to this round bit just here on the edge of it it's a bit, little bit of a gap yeah, so I've got to focus there I'd really like to um, get rid of that so I have to do some like sand this a little bit extra on, on just this part but leave that part and then let it come in a bit we'll see using my incredible engineering skills I have managed to make all of these fit perfectly perfectly would you believe it no, I wouldn't. Well, they do. So, it's time to get gluing. Now, I will probably need to... Um, no, actually, I should get something to spread this glue with, shouldn't I? Yes, I should. Uh, it's pretty cold today, so this glue is going to take a while to dry. Three, five, mm, seven, 
nine. Okay, now I've got a special way of doing this. Let's see if I've got it right here. what it's doing. Yeah, that's what we wanted. And how about on this side? Yeah. So it's looking good, just needs to be clamped on both sides, that one. Alright, now, hopefully I don't knock any of these suckers. The Dean. Which I don't really want to push it up that way. I want to just place it down. I think it's better. Ooh, 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 don't touch the others. Perfect. And this is one I was having the most trouble with out of all of them, and it's the smallest one. Oh, it's come up good. Okay. But I want to wipe that because that was the edge I was the most worried about. Starting to pick up, it's going to rain before long. We might have to do some work on that one later on, eh? <clears throat> anyway. Uh, I don't think the others actually need clamps, I will clamp them just in case, but I think they're going to be okay. As long as it's still tight on the edge where we need it, then we're okay. Well, I haven't really used these clamps that much, but I just came in here and I noticed the two I had on here were missing and then I I found that and uh, then I looked around and found the other bit so two the two clamps I had on here just snapped off yeah that would have been that one I think yeah Bam. And that one, essentially the same spot. So uh, that's some cheapo plastic, that's for sure.
Just having sawdust just grows in. Don't have too big a lump there, but if I touch the sawdust, it'll pull it out. So I'm just... It's fine, I'll just turn it back. Now I'm trying to remember where I put sawdust. Alright, so I'm about to sand a radius into the neck. I'm going for a 7.25 radius, very tight radius for good for playing bar chords. And I'm going to graduate it to what they call it a compound radius. So I'm going to do the whole thing in 9.5 inch. And then I'll go back over and just do from here to about the 12th fret, somewhere around there, it'll be 7.25. Uh, just a bit more of a transition because I want to keep the action a little bit lower up here as well as uh, having the benefits of the tight radius. Anyway, I'll get into it. I'm using 80 grit just to get it down fast and I'll switch to 120 and then I'll go right up to about 1200 to try and really sort of polish it. Then we'll coat it before we put the frets in, otherwise this is going to get really dirty, this timber. A lot of colour timbers, the uh, metal from the files gets into the timber and you just can't get it out, so I'm going to coat it before I do the fretting. So it's very important nine we're doing the nine not to tilt the block while you're doing it because when you do you're going to wear more off the edges relatively because this is curved if i tilt it it's more aggressive on the edges so you've got to keep these suckers straight it's better to go slow and keep it straight so that you're getting the radius the same as the block you need to clamp this down a bit harder I also run my fingers along the edge of the neck so I can keep this, help keep this centered. I don't know how good it works, but it's the theory. So you know you're done when one, you start seeing sawdust in here and you'll also see this will start to get sanded at the centre. Once you start standing in the centre, that means you've got your radius and you'll also see it on the paper. Oops, forgot to put my mask on. So I am coating the fretboard be before I put the frets in because I did a maple fretboard and when I did the frets, when I did a file in the frets, the metal gets into the timber even if you sand it to a very fine, this is sanded to 1200 and um, yeah it just gets in the timber and you can't get it out, it just won't wipe out, you can't get it out. Just now, linseed oil which gives me a nice matte coating which I normally put on fretboards, I don't think will stop that filing getting, the metal getting into the timber. Linseed oil kind of gives a, um, this is methane by the way, it's just alcohol, just getting any um, any oils out off the surface of the timber or out of the timber to a certain extent. Just give this a rub. Also getting sawdust off. And because it's meth it'll dry quickly and hopefully won't lift the grain too much. We'll just check that actually. No, I've still got a I've still got a mirror finish. You probably can't see the mirror finish, but if you put it on a extreme angle, I don't know if you're gonna see anything. But when I do it, I get like a mirror. I can see reflections and all that. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that the metal filings will still penetrate linseed oil. Because linseed oil is kind of a coating, but it, it kind of just soaks in. Whereas this poly will definitely provide, well, almost definitely provide a coating. All right, let's see how this comes up, eh? Got the tin out in the light that's blocking your light. Doesn't matter if I get a bit on the side of the neck because that neck's going to get carved anyway. I just want to get the size of the fretboard for now. They're also going to get sanded, but you know. Alright, so the first coat, I just want to go sort of lightly like that. That will then cure pretty quickly. It'll cure within a couple of hours and it'll probably be dry. Well, it says you can coat again within six hours. With all of these types of things, your first coat will dry really fast. 
that subsequent quotes, uh, quotes, subsequent coats will take a lot longer to dry um, because yeah, you're putting a gloss surface on top of another gloss surface. It takes a lot longer to dry, whereas like on timber like this, a lot of it just soaks in and dries really quickly. And because there's imperfections in the surface, they fill in, creates a greater surface area, so there's more area to exposed to air, so it dries quicker. Uh, like I can see this, some areas are basically drying already. Anyway, that gives us a bit more of a look of how the fretboard's going to look. I can also see a bit where I've accidentally hit with the saw just there. It wasn't standing out until I coated it. Oh well.